Living life in North Yorkshire. BBC Radio York. Loving life in North Yorkshire. Adam and Anna in the afternoon. On BBC Radio York. So, inspired by novelists like Ruth Rendell and Minette Walters and Anne Cleves, our next guest, a lady called Kate Evans from Scarborough, has eventually written her first novel. Now, she's uh, she's been a writer for about 30 years, but this is her first novel. It's a crime thriller, which is uh, set in uh, Scarborough. So we'll be talking to Kate Evans about her brand new book, The Art of Imperfection, Fantastic. in the next hour. And also, we'll recap... The Human League and Don't You Want Me, Baby. It's uh, 19 minutes past two. Now, Kate Evans from Scarborough has been a writer for the last 30 years, but it's only now that she's published her first novel, a crime thriller, which is set in the town. Well, she works as a lecturer in creative writing at Hull University at the Scarborough campus. She's also a qualified counsellor, and now she's adding the word novelist mm -hmm. to her CV. Well, she's been inspired by novelists like Ruth Rendell, Minette Walters and Anne Cleves. Kate's first novel is called The Art of Imperfection, and she joins us now from our Scarborough studio. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, Kate. You must be on cloud nine. Um, I'm very excited, yes. I mean, this has been uh, 30 years of writing to get this uh, far, but, yeah, I'm very excited. Why is it taken 30 years? Um, well, I think partly that's the apprenticeship you need to get good enough. <laughs> uh, but also, um, I've been publishing other things during those 30 years, mainly non-fiction works, um, articles and a book in 2013. Uh, so the uh, fiction was kind of put on the back burner for a while and I, I've taken it up more recently. And uh, also there's the problem with finding somebody to publish. Mm. So um, I turned 50 last year and I just decided, well, nobody else wants me, I'm going to do it myself. So you've published it yourself as well? I have, yes. What's, what, what's it like when you, you, you've, been, you've been writing for, for 30 years and yet there the, the seems to be, from the people that we've spoken to before who have written novels, that, that is a real step, isn't it, to say, right, I've, I've written a novel? Um, well, uh, yeah, well, I guess so. I mean, I wrote my first novel when I was 18 um, and I've been writing novels since then, um, novel-length fiction since then. Um, but it, So it's really been a culmination of all of that to get to the point where I felt, yes, this is good enough. Um, and also that needs feedback from readers. So um, I've got some very kind uh, friends who are also writers who read what I write and they help me uh, become better at writing and um, also give me the confidence and the motivation to say, yes, this is good enough to publish. What's in it for you to self-publish? Do you have more autonomy? Um, I don't think I've got a choice. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in some ways, the positives are that you've got... I've got control over everything. I haven't got an editor saying, no, you can't put that in, or, um, you know, we don't like that because we don't think it will sell. Um, I think a lot of publishers, like uh, a lot of um, organisations these days, it's very much about product and uh, what will sell and what won't sell. And so I think that puts a lot of pressure on editors sometimes. Where, does, where does luck come into it, though? Because we, we talk to a lot of published authors, a lot of authors who have, you know, great uh, publishing companies behind them and we also talk to a lot of people like you who've had such a desire to get their work published that they have published it themselves would you still rather have gone to a big publishing house i think so yes i think there's a bit of stigma about self-publishing still i think people think well if it was good enough then it would have eventually found a publisher so there is a bit of stigma but plus, it's just an enormous amount of work to have to edit it, to have to copy edit it, to have to format it, to do all the design. And now, of course, I'm doing all the marketing all myself. So it's just a huge amount of work, which actually takes me away from what I like doing, which I really love doing, which is the writing. So, yeah, I would, I would prefer to have a publisher. And also, you, you say it's a huge amount of work. Being a trained counsellor then, Kate, how, yes. is it possible for, 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 for both to work alongside each other? How, how do you balance it? Well, um, I, 
And I need to say that I don't see one-to-one -one clients anymore. I haven't done for a year, and that was for personal reasons. And I also want to say, I want to make clear to anybody who's listening that um, any work that I've done in my counselling and workshops are completely confidential. Yeah. They don't go, you know, it doesn't go into my writing. It doesn't seep into my writing. The, uh, but does, that, but does your work as a counsellor give you a different perspective on how the mind works? Well, I think, I think as a counsellor, you see human frailty and human vulnerability. And um, I think crime is very much about that. It's about um, people being, often being placed in a situation where they don't, they don't know what else to do, really. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in what, what makes very normal and ordinary people do very nasty things. I'm not interested in the psychopaths of this world. I think they do very little murder. I'm interested in just what pushes ordinary people over the edge. And I suppose, yeah, I suppose you see that sometimes in the counselling room. But I would like to say that most of the portrayal of the um, depression in this book is from my own experience of depression. I certainly haven't taken it from any stories that clients have given me. OK, OK. Stay there. We'll come back to you in just a few moments' time because uh, what's fascinating is that this story is mm. set in Scarborough. So we'll find out more about the story and why it was important to uh, set it in uh, Scarborough. Our guest at this point in the afternoon is uh, Kate Evans. More from Kate coming up in a few moments' time. See where York is just gone at 2.30. It's Monday afternoon. It's Adam and Anna with you through until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Our uh, guest this hour is uh, Kate Evans. She's from uh, Scarborough. She's a, a lecturer in creative writing. She's uh, also a qualified uh, counsellor as well. And she's been writing for the last 30 years. And she has uh, recently uh, self-published her first novel. It's a crime thriller, which is uh, set in Scarborough. And... Uh, Kate is actually in our Scarborough studio this afternoon. Hello again. Hello, hello. Uh, you mentioned just before we, we left you to, to go to our travel news that um, parts of the book talk about uh, depression within your your, your characters and, and, and the setting of everything. And you said that um, that is based on your own experience of, uh, of depression. What made you want to, to write about things like depression and mental illness within a crime thriller? Well, I think uh, there's a lot of stigma and misunderstanding about uh, depression in particular. And um, because of my own experience and also my experience as a counsellor, I really wanted to find a way, um, an accessible way, to perhaps uh, question people's beliefs about depression. So um, I love crime fiction. I've read crime fiction all my life. And when I came to uh, think about it, this was actually rewriting and rewriting a novel that I'd already written, I realised that I could use the crime genre to explore these themes, but also make it um, accessible and engaging to the readership. Tell us about the plot for the book then, based on, you know, all these gritty subjects that you tackle. Um, well, the basic plot is a whodunit. Uh, it's the investigation of uh, the murder of Dr Themis Green, who's a psychotherapist. Um, but really, um, what happens is that that death, the ripples that are caused by that death, uh, go out into the lives of three people. Hannah, who is a trainee counsellor, Aurora, who's just had her first child, and uh, Theo Kunde, who is the detective sergeant looking into the murder. And it's how these three lives are affected by uh, that murder, as well as the investigation into who did it. Um, so that, that that's really how, how it works. And you've set it in Scarborough. Mm. What, why, why was it important, Kate, for you to set it in Scarborough? Well, I, I moved to Scarborough ten years ago, and I absolutely love the place. Um, I chose to come here. I didn't have a job. I just came here because I, I love the town, and I love the, the sea coast and uh, the moors. And, um, and it was just natural for me to write it in Scarborough. Um, I did uh, think long and hard about using the name Scarborough and whether I should <laughs> make it fictitious. But in the end, I decided, well, it's so much like Scarborough, I might as well use the name Scarborough. And also, I think that this, this story is about people who are on the edge. 
and um, the uh, connection between the sea and the cliffs and the crumbling cliffs in Scarborough. Uh, it, it's kind of like a bit of a metaphor for being on the edge. So I think the two work quite well together. How have you done your research for this? Because crime novelists that, that Adam and I speak to on a regular basis, you know, thinking about people like Linda LaPlante, who's got a lot of contacts, you know, within um, the uh, police community, within um, the, uh, you know, she knows coroners, people mm. like that. She really does do her research about yeah. the deaths that occur within her books. So, yeah. you know, what sort of research have you done? Well, writers are like sponges, really. We just um, soak up everything that's around us. And um, th a lot of this story is set in the therapeutic, in the therapy world, which I know very well already. But it's true, I don't know as much about police procedure, and I had to do some research for that. Um, I did my research for that mainly through um, reading other crime writers. Mm. And also, um, there's some great reality. TV at the moment actually 24 hours in custody <laughs> is a fabulous <laughs> place to go to look at police procedures so you know you just have to I mean it's true I don't I don't have the connections that Linda LaPlante has but you just have to do what you can uh, with the resources that you have but but credible nonetheless Oh, well, I hope so. I mean, I certainly haven't had anybody saying uh, this is a load of rubbish and mm. a police officer mm. wouldn't do that. So maybe that will come. We'll see. You've been lecturing in, in creative writing for, for a fair old while mm. now. Have your students read your book? I don't know. They'd see what they <laughs> thought of it, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody, nobody who I've actually taught has come back to me. But I've had some really nice reactions, both from people who know me and also it's been out for review and I've had reviews from... Uh, people who don't know me at all but have just read the book um, in fact, one guy recently said, I write like Hilary Mantel. So oh, wow. Wow. Very good. I was very happy yeah. with that. So what now? I mean, is, is there going to be another one? Now you've done, done it after 30-odd years. Is, is, is it now going to be just, I think it's going to be pouring out of it's, you? It's pouring out of me, trust me. <laughs> uh, the, this is the first of a series. Right. Um, and I've got the other, I've got the next two on paper. Uh, so the second one um, I, is in pretty good shape, but still needs some work. Work, and I'm hoping to publish that later this year. Where does the momentum come from, though, when you're self-publishing? Because you haven't got your book editor breathing down your neck saying, Kate, I need that mm. by January next year. You've got a year to write book two. Well, I mean, there's a certain amount of self-motivation. I want to tell these stories. They're in my head. I want to get them out on paper. I love writing. I love crafting. But then there's my friends. There's my friends who are writers who are really encouraging and supportive, and, and they really help me to stay motivated. I belong to uh, various writing groups, and um, if, if there's anybody out there who wants to write a, bo a book, then join a group. Mm. You really need a supportive community around you, and I found that in Scarborough, so I'm very lucky. Brilliant. It's been lovely to talk Fabulous. to you. Congratulations. Well Thank done. You. And we hope it goes from strength to strength. And get in touch when your second one's out. I will. Can, can I just say that the art of it's the art of the imperfect and it's available both in paperback and in ebook on Amazon. Am I allowed to say of course that? You are. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you yeah. just have. Very well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Kate, thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Kate Evans, yep, she says there the uh, the art of the imperfect and uh, it's set in Scarborough. That's great, great isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it's brilliant as well to achieve something like this yeah you know she's wanted to to get a book published for so long and actually it's nice now that people can self-publish yeah. um and you know who knows who knows might pick it up and think right okay there's something in this <laughs> terrific we'll take her on for the next book lives in scarborough writes about scarborough and publishes it in scarborough brilliant kate evans and the art of the imperfect Go on, get it,